today. So this is the session number nine of the our SME e fair for today. So this is the first ever SME e fair online. That uh, thank you for supporting, and uh, we still have a line up of a series of uh, speakers to share with you about the in from their different angle. So today the topic of a session is uh, how the e-commerce can be an effective additional sales channel for your businesses. So if you are the SME business owner, this will be the topic for you, and especially the topic itself at, at during this critical period of uh, time. And uh, in today's world, there is uh, no doubt that the e-commerce is one of the best ways to help the SME to regain and uh, upgrade the businesses. But not only that, but uh, e-commerce is expecting to grow at a great pace nowadays. Uh, I think all of you sure that uh, more and more people will want to actually go online to purchase their items or use the services online. And it is actually important for the SME to learn about the e-commerce. If you are still not digitalized your business yet, still not go through uh, go to the e-commerce yet, maybe you have to embrace this new normal because uh, after the uh, COVID-19, you will see that more and more people, even your supplier or your partners, they are actually going towards uh, this direction. So it's an inevitable uh, topic that we want to discuss today. So venturing into the e-commerce at the same time can help the SME to expand their business globally and allow them to explore into the new facets of the businesses. So today, we are very fortunate to have uh, two qualified speakers to share with you about uh, this uh, this area okay uh, for the first speakers today that we are having in the, this webinar today is uh, mr song so mr song is the director uh, of uh, e-commerce for the mdac uh, he leads the e-commerce division in the mdac where he is entrusted to further governance the e-commerce as a key driver to accelerate the growth of a malaysia digital economy and uh, prior to joining the impact, we already have uh, several roles in leading the di uh, digital businesses uh, of uh, SME in the uh, logistic and uh, in the digital marketing and uh, advertising industry. So also a little bit of introduction for MDAC. Uh, that is a lead, lead agency to implement the MSC status, uh, MSC Malaysia initiative since 1996 which is already more than 25 years. And uh, on the other hand, we also have uh, uh, another speakers on online. Together with us is uh, Mr. Wixon Tan. He is a senior VP of the marketing for the Exabyte. So Mr. Wixon is an experienced uh, graphic. Uh, is it okay? Uh, online, just now I hear something. Okay. Oh, I, just, I just say hi to everyone. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Okay, so Wixon is an experienced uh, graphic web designer and uh, a passionate digital uh, marketing strategist with a uh, demonstrated history of uh, working with uh, XRBAX. And uh, XRBAX itself, I think, is no strangers to the e-commerce industry. I think uh, everyone knows them. Uh, backed by the 18 years of uh, solid experience, XRBAX already empowered more than 140,000 worldwide clients from individual small and medium-sized uh, businesses to the government and the public listed company. So enough of uh, introduction. Now we let us uh, start to discuss and talk about the topic for today. So I would like to first invite uh, Mr. Song to share with us on your opinion, maybe a brief uh, five minutes to start with the topic of uh, the discussion is uh, how the e-commerce can be effective uh, on the sales channel for the businesses for the SME in the market. Uh, yeah, so thank you, uh, Roy, uh, for the introductions. Uh, yeah, can you hear me well, right? I suppose, yes. right? Okay. Yes, yeah, well. So, uh, yeah, e-commerce, I think, uh, has been a hot topic. Uh, yes. And then thanks to COVID, and then the, we've been, the, you know, suddenly uh, there's an interest of so many uh, businesses want to go into e-commerce. And uh, in MDEC, we have been, uh, promoting uh, to SME, micro and SME, uh, to go into e-commerce even before uh, COVID. Uh, so, but uh, at that time, uh, the interest is not as intense as current. So, uh, 
suddenly with COVID, everyone is rushing in and say that I want to get into e-commerce. Later, I'll share a little bit more why this happened. So uh, I think the importance of e-commerce, the awareness of e-commerce, I think thanks to COVID, is already there. We don't have to tell how important. But now it's talk about how. And later on, I'm going to share with you how the government's initiative is going to help you uh, to go into e-commerce uh, easier. So that is the areas I'm going to focus on. And uh, just now, uh, Roy mentioned to me, he mentioned about, uh, so I'm the director of e-commerce. It doesn't mean I know how to do e-commerce, uh, selling on e-commerce. But for one thing, I know how to shop on e-commerce. And I shop a lot on e-commerce. And that's very important, especially business owner out there. You must know how to buy on e-commerce before you talk about selling. If you don't believe in buying on e-commerce, forget about selling on e-commerce because you don't yeah. understand. So the first step as a business owner, first thing you need to do is go and buy something on e-commerce. Then you experience and go and return something on e-commerce. Then you know the process. So it's very important. You yourself don't just come and listen to all this presentation. You must take action. At least go and buy something on e-commerce and return exactly. something. So yep. I, that is my intro, but later on, I'm going to share a little bit more. So, okay, thank uh, you, Mr. Song. So this is uh, to encourage people to support the digital e-commerce and the e uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah. I, I believe that uh, we really need to put ourselves uh, into the shoe of the consumer, especially during this time of a period. Uh. Yeah. And uh, let us uh, invite uh, Mr. Wixon to actually share with us about your uh, point of view. Okay, in terms of the uh, e-commerce, I, I totally agree with Mr. Song just now what uh, he mentioned about the e-commerce area. So so currently, we, we see the boom on and in terms of during COVID because of everyone is hiding at home, they cannot go out home, so they have to be, I mean, they're forced to be like using the, the things that are on your on your palm to order. So everything has to be from here. So basically, if if those that previously they are not setting up their online business, so probably they, they might have problem. They might have trouble to 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 entertain to, to to sell that products in uh, to their customers or even to their neighbor. So what I'm here in from our experience is even you are staying just near with the hardware shop that you if you previously always go and buy it, but now today you if, if you are logging down you cannot go out, so you don't even able to touch them. So what is the best way is actually is e-commerce. So if on that time that hardware shop is already set up, then probably you are the one of the online buyer. For them again instead of just go to their shop i mean uh physically so 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 basically i would say that uh be prepared because we have no idea when it will be happens again so what i would say is make sure that if your business is available right now that able to make it online what i would say is everything can be online because even myself having uh, my experience i bring my mom uh Kui actually selling online that's true story so which is I, what I would say is there's nothing impossible, but as long as you have the guts to make it happen. So what I would say is try yourself to make it happen. Don't because of uh, people saying that online is is, is like uh, you do it, but uh, maybe you need to uh, do more things. But the thing is you never try, you never know. So so basically, if you would like to handle these divisions well, I would, still, I, I would say that go ahead and try it out, even no matter what kind of a way. So Exabyte is actually helping those SMEs that moving forward from offline to online, they are keen to like make it online, everything's from their shop. They want to test it out. So Exabyte is providing that kind of services to help them and providing some consultations. I even will, we provide a lot of like webinars about Exabyte, I mean about e-commerce, about how we can actually help because all the while Exabyte is using websites to generate our sales. So basically hosting, you have to, I mean, order online. So we are we are having the, the, the whole experience of the, how actually this is gonna work. So we share this out to everyone and we help everyone that keen to be going online with our I mean with our own experience and, and so on. Hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Wixon, for the introduction uh, starts uh, for the uh, topic today. And I uh, just thought uh Wixon got mentioned about uh, one of uh, uh story is that even the people selling the Nyong Ya Kui, your mom, is actually going online. So I see that yep. even, I believe that every one of us, you notice that our neighborhood, uh, there is uh, some home uh, home player okay. or the uh, home make uh, business yep. owner, 
they actually start to embrace this kind of uh, technology. Even some of them actually, they know nothing, but they ask for the help from their son or their daughter to actually help them to set up the online store. And uh, myself, uh, also, I actually uh, do a lot of uh, purchases uh, nowadays after MCO. Before that, I really rarely actually do this. But after the MCO, it becomes uh, my habit. So I believe that this is uh, really a tremendous uh, change uh, in the habits of uh, people, players in the market. So uh, Mr. Song, just now, uh, I, I know that you also have uh, some sharing, uh, you have uh, some presentation would like to share with uh, our audience online. So maybe you can share with us. Yeah, uh, you? so I my screen. So uh, yes, uh, so... Uh, Then, so can you see my screen now? Yes, you're putting up. It's loading. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so today, today's topic is about how e-commerce can be an effective additional sales channel for your uh, businesses. So I, I want to go very you know detail on this particular topic itself. So when we talk about effective additional sales channel, when we say effective, that means an additional channel for you to reach and serve your customers so for especially for retail now that you cannot have physical contact or physical uh what they call that uh, present with your customers so you must find an additional way or new way to reach out to your customers uh, and then serve them serve them in this case address their needs uh through the new channel and and we talk about commerce why we want to do that is because because of COVID, and even before COVID, the consumer is start migrating. It just COVID has expedited the whole process of consumer migration. That means more and more consumer are going from offline to online. Maybe the senior uh, citizens are still on offline, uh, but then the most of the new, uh, sorry, young uh, consumer they are already online, and the Z generations when they are born, they're now they're young, they're already online by, 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 by what you call by nature. So they already buying things online. So for us, uh, who are a little bit more seniors, we started to, because of COVID, we started to use more and more e-commerce to do our daily purchase. Like uh, what you call that, we have mentioned just now, COVID, you are locked down, you cannot go to the shops. And now we have no choice but to purchase all our goods, essential and non-essential online. So. The reason why we have to find a new channel is simply because the consumer have migrated. And if your consumer have migrated, your customer have migrated, and you do not do anything, you will be left behind with no customers or less customers, right? So when we say that offline to online migration, what will happen to your business? What are you, what are the things you need to do? You still need to do pretty much the same thing, but in a new way. For example, you still need to create awareness. For example, if you are retail businesses, you still have a retail shop, and you used to have, maybe you hope your, your retail shop is at the, what you call a shopping complex. The shopping complex do the job of bringing the customers to your store. Uh, but now you go online, when you're gonna sell an, online, the awareness have to either create by yourself or you participate in the e-marketplace, the e-marketplace bring buyers to you and if you need to do it yourself you need to attract new uh, what you call buyers to your your e-store uh, then you need to do digital marketing so that is creating awareness then the next step is about consideration uh, meaning is that when somebody comes into your store physical store and then you need to say that what you need how uh, are you going for uh, you are looking for something and then how can i help you kind of thing so but online you still need to do the same uh, similar thing, but in a different way. New tools you need to apply. Like, for example, the chatbot, and you have to have things like review to influence the purchase. So the next step is about purchase payment and all that. So you need to have different way. You in the physical store probably you have the point of sales there, and then you collect money, and then you you know. But online you have to rely on the payment gateway or FBX or other uh, what they call uh, payment options. So it will the same process, but in the new tools or new way of doing it. Delivery, uh, yeah. So customer used to come to your shop to do to buy and then they pick up the things. But now with the e-commerce, 
you need to do delivery yourself to find out or you engage somebody to do the delivery to you uh, for you. Uh, that poses another problem. For example, the, the, you do, doing the delivery, you do not know whether the customer is there or a new set of issue or problem will arise and you as an owner, you need to face and overcome this issue. Of course, then it's about retention and the work basically that means how to make sure the customer can continuously come to buy from you. So pretty much online and offline is the same process, but for online, you need to rely on different tools and different partners to uh, what you call to help you to do this. Speaking of partners, in Malaysia e-commerce ecosystem is very, very rich. We have people like Exabyte to help you, but more than that, we have others as well. For example, you have marketplace for the B2C, you have B2B, you have, uh, you know, you want to build your own website, you have uh, from Shopify, you have, uh, you know, eLoka, you have all e uh, WooCommerce, all kind of, uh, what you call that, uh, uh, e-commerce uh, uh, template-based, uh, uh, what they call that, uh, tools for you to build your uh e-commerce website. So you have trainings, you have cashback, you have social media, you have payment wallet. So our e-commerce ecosystem in Malaysia is very rich. You don't have to do everything yourself. You can rely on some of the delivery service or what are the service provider out there to help you to do this. And I encourage you to do so because in this uh, e-commerce, uh, uh, what you call this uh, process, uh, some of the processes are quite complex and uh, you need to learn from this service provider. So uh, if you want to do it, everything by yourself, you can, uh, you, you, if you have the volume and you have the other resources, especially human resources, right? So that, then, then I say that uh, the process and then the good thing is there is ecosystem out there, uh, service provider out there to help you to do so. So you don't have to do everything yourself, but you must know what are the things that involve when you talk about e-commerce, right? So the question a lot of people ask is that, hey, you know, is my business suitable for e-commerce or not? Um, I think pretty much now, uh, most of the people understand that, uh, that, that, that almost everything can sell online. Almost everything can sell online. But for those of you who have still skeptical, is it whether my business uh, you know, can, can go online and sell online. I would like to share some of the, the things that is not so common and then you figure out yourself whether your business is suitable to go online or not. But these are the current trend, 2020 trend. It's happening in overseas and pretty soon it will come to Malaysia as well. Wholesaler uh, in overseas, they are going online as well, especially in an advanced country. When it's an advanced country, I'm talking about e-commerce uh, the advance of e-commerce, the likes of China. So wholesaler, they are going online already. So meaning is that, uh, for example, this one pretty much the B2B, right? So for example, in China, there is this website called 1688 for some time already. So what happened yep. is that the smaller, the offline people, the mom and pop, they go to this website to buy things and then they sell online, as uh, a sell offline. There are some small B2C online fillers, they go to the website, like the wholesaler website, to buy product and then they sell uh, online as well. So the B to B to C. So it's happening always uh, overseas, and I believe it will be happening in Malaysia if it's not already. So the next one is well, we talk about furniture selling online, yeah. But this now I'm talking about furniture rental online. So if you can rent a car online, you can uh, rent a room online like Airbnb. Why can't you uh, rent furniture online? And this is happening in overseas. So you are in this business, don't just look at, you know, uh, in Malaysia alone. You have to look at other countries, what is happening, because within a year or less, it will happen in Malaysia as well. So you need to be very alert what is going on, especially for your industry, and then you learn from there, and then you implement locally. Art. Art is another area that many people think, that, hey, arts are sell online, can uh? Well, it's happening overseas. So art may not be the, the, the what they call the high-end, those, you know, Picasso and all that, but more like, for example, arts like, for example, photography or those kind of arts work and things like that, that now more and more people are going online to sell. The reason why is, in this particular example of arts, um, the, the, if you want to sell, example, if you want to sell within Kuala Lumpur, maybe the market is very small. 
But if you want to sell the whole country or even the South, Southeast Asia or the whole world, uh, it's going to be very expensive. But the e-commerce, it helps you to reach the bigger market. So for a small, uh, what they call small in this case, market size within Malaysia, then you can make use of e-commerce to reach a bigger audience. So arts is one of them. Real estate, I think in Malaysia also happening uh, already. Uh, the likes of iProperty and things like that, and those people are pretty much advertising. But moving forward, more and more, they're selling it online. You already see some technology uh, where people, you know, they can virtually tour the, 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 the property and all that. So very soon, uh, you can even buy online uh, uh, this uh, property. Well, I know that the local marketplace, you can buy cars already. So uh, more and more of you can buy cars online. And uh, normally you buy car online, uh, there are some attraction like deals and all that, right? So that is real estate. So building material, uh, this is another area that I think most people thought that it's not possible, but it's happening overseas. I know in, uh, in Thailand, there's one website is very interesting because they are, they solve all the problem of uh, construction industry, including buying building materials. So it's happening already. So those people out there, if you look at these five industries, that sample of five industries, that I think is going to happen in Malaysia. So now for you, the question to you, uh, the audience out there or listener out there, uh, you think about for yourself, your industry, I think is definitely possible to go online uh, and sell online. Uh, what industry, you may ask, who is not, uh, going, not, not, not going online, I think it's not so much on the industry, is probably your business. You think that you do not want to continue business anymore. Uh, you want to close down because COVID too difficult. So I close down business. Uh, then probably you don't need to go online because everyone else in terms of customers, your clients are all going online. So it's a matter of survival. You have to go online, right? So I think all the possibility is there, right? So uh, go online. So next, the good news is from the government side. Yeah, so the government are also coming out to help. Uh, I believe by now you heard about this Banjana uh, campaign that we have. Specifically, I want to talk about these two campaigns. It's called Banjana e-commerce campaign or initiative. There's two of them. Uh, one is micro and SME e-commerce campaign. The second one is short Malaysia online campaign. So what is these two campaign? Um, Pretty much the first campaign, micro and SME, to so help the SME or the micro to come online to sell easier. For example, you go on, if you are a restaurant owner and you want to participate in Food Panda or Grab, now is a very good opportunity because we make it easy for you and less cost for you because there are some of the sales and uh, uh, support training and all that are all heavily subsidized. If it's not free, some of them are heavily subsidized. This is a golden opportunity for you to go online and sell. That is getting the SME micro to go online and sell. We have a lot of uh, varieties for you. Uh, when I say varieties, is if you go online and search, later on I'll give you the, the, the link, and search what are the possibility you can, it, it pretty much cater for all the industry out there. If you are micro, you if you are, restaurant, if you are even like uh, hardware shops and uh, all kind of industry, we have different platform players to help you, right? So that is on the getting you to sell online. We're going to share a link for you. Then the second one is a can, the Shop Malaysia online campaign. Shop Malaysia online campaign is to drive buyers. So getting you online uh, to sell, the other things the government is doing is generate demand. You know, giving vouchers to your consumer. So again, it's a co-funding between us, us in this case, government and the platform players, both coming together uh, to help the, uh, to revive the, 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 the economy by driving demands, in this case, for online purchase. So that is Shop Malaysia Online. Shop Malaysia Online just started. There is more than 1 million coupon or vouchers has been, uh, what you call, utilized within the first week of August alone. So there will be more coming until end of September. So talk about micro SME e-commerce campaign, which I think is very relevant to the businesses out there. If you look at the right-hand side, 
That is the Penjana participant, uh, participating partners. You can see Boost is there, Coracel, Confirm Plus Shop is a new one. Go and check it out. Deliver it, e local, e Roman, fashion related, and the whole lot of it until Sarora. You see the 20 of them. There's something for everyone. So the objective is to make sure it's easy for the micro and the SME to come online. Right? So then there is uh, the duration. In this case, this campaign start actually last uh, month, uh, June, end of June, July, uh, started July until uh, September itself. Right? Uh, so the e the what the, who are the target audience? If you are SME, if you are rural entrepreneurs, you are suburban entrepreneurs, your B forty women entrepreneurs, or we cater for all. Whether you are registered business or non registered business, you still can participate. That is a good thing. So what are the things we can help you? For example, uh, number five, we talk about generic offering provided by the partners. In this case, a partner co funded by the government. Uh, so you have training. You have helped you to go on product listing, photo shoot, some of them. If you need photo shoot, there is some platform uh, give you vouchers for you to engage photo shoot facility, uh, uh, service and uh, order management, warehouse and stock management, things like that. It's all available there. So then even a lot of them are offering, helping you to do logistic and delivery as well. So this is uh, some of the goodies and uh, that they are offering. So go to the website. Uh, to to uh, what you call to uh, see what are the campaigns, uh, what are the offering there out there. So um, yeah, so so in uh, this case, we are working together uh, with the partners, uh, platform partners. Important thing is to to improve your sales productivities because not only train you, but we have uh, seller subsidies, we have sales support to help you. So there is more than uh, now currently that we have about twenty partners. Uh, that able to help you, right? So this is the website, uh, microsite. I, uh, you know, you can scan this uh, QR code, and it will take you to the Panjana microsite, uh, where you can select uh, which are the platform. You can scroll through the, all the the platform players and see which is suitable for you. What are the offer? Uh, you know, they they uh, provide to you. Uh, I mean, they can give you. So the link I, I just now have shared with the host just now, hopefully they will publish it and show it to everyone who are tuning in right now. Uh, otherwise, you can look at the uh, screen right now. Uh, our website, the microsite for this is www.go-ecommerce.my slash panjana slash msme dash e-commerce. But if you can also scan the QR code, I'm quite sure all of you have the uh, know how to scan the QR code by now because everywhere you need to go now you have to scan QR code. So uh, go online and find out more. Please go online and uh, at least if you don't sell, go online and buy and experience it. Then you are convinced. So I think that's all I want to share with you. I give it back to the what uh, the host. All right, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Song, for the insightful sharing. I I have to give the compliment to MDAC because I see that there is a lot of our effort to putting in into this area. Like just now, you mentioned about the Panjana e-commerce initiative, and also the website just now, the Go e uh, Go Commerce website, which actually I personally I also go into it uh, before to actually check out uh, what's the what's the information in it. So I'm really pretty impressed of uh, the efforts you all put in on uh, helping the SME in the market to grow their business. And uh, now we have uh, our next speaker, Mr. Wixon, also to share with, with us about your point of view on this topic. So over to you, Mr. Basically, uh, thank you, Mr. Song, just now uh, sharing about Go e-commerce, right? So, so basically, we are, Xamba is one of the uh, partners under Touch and Go. So when you go to the Go, Go e-commerce, right? So when you click on the Touch and Go offer, right? You can see Xamba's logo is there because we are partnership with uh, Touch and Go to provide actually our e-commerce platform for SMEs to go online, which is FOC. So that, that platform is actually including that you can build it DIY yourself, set up your e-commerce platform, and we are integrated with IP88 together for the touch and go e wallet. So basically, you are all done. Just need to upload your products and set up your, your, your front end of your e-commerce. And then basically, you can go online. All right. So I would like to share uh, a little bit about digital marketing. Since, uh, yeah, 
Mr. Song just want to share about the what is e-commerce and what kind of e-commerce uh, elements that you need to have it. So just a little bit about sharing about actually after, because people might actually concern that um, what is the next steps that probably I should do if I have the e-commerce. Is it means that when you're having the e-commerce, then your online will be flying, your revenue will be giving in, but actually no. So so basically don't 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 have this kind of mindset because e-commerce is not, it is not a, ge a revenue generated immediately to to you when you're setting up. No, actually it's a platform for you to handle, but the rest of the thing that you need, you need to put in more efforts, for example, digital marketing, like what Mr. Song Tsai had mentioned, and also a lot of kind of a channel like posting, social media and branding, especially. So you need to go on and have it done uh, in correct way so you can actually drive in more traffic to your e-commerce store. <clears throat> then only you can make a, I mean, let the users make a purchase and know you. All right. So just a little bit uh, a sharing about my my end here. All right. Um, okay. So I hope uh, everyone can see my screen. Okay. So so basically is about. Okay. Let me see. All right. So from here, you can see that actually. Um, I talk about Facebook. So Facebook actually, when you are you're, you're sharing Facebook, it's not it's not directly to your products only. So you can share something like tips. Okay, for example, this <clears throat> this company is like doing. I mean, selling di like a uh, um hardware hardware inventory. So hardware tools. So basically, you won't <clears throat> keep on spamming your friends with the tools. Uh, this is hammer. This is screw. This is screwdriver. So. It is not necessary to be doing so because people are not going to take, I mean, to care about what kind of product is actually that you're posting. But they are more care about the what kind of uh, solutions that you can provide to me. Then hopefully I can from here to learn some things. Then in your, I mean, in your sharing, I can learn something that I can go and buy from you because you are the one that's sharing me. So I remember you are the one that uh, that, that, that proposing to me that I buy from you that things that I set it up based on your tips. So basically this post is kind of like something like you use a corner then because of the you from home, then probably you can set up your own DIY, your own from the corner, make it like your workspace. So how can you make it? It's like uh, this video whole view is like um, doing a, from step one until, until the end that how can you change the place from here that to another one, which is <clears throat> quite, Quite impressive for me because a girl that actually can do it their own by just just having some kind of a simplified the tools. So on next is actually you can see instead of like sorry instead of like um giving out I mean uh just kind of like a uh, voucher just voucher only but maybe we can give something like for your kids. So for example, the kid give out a, a whole I mean uh mm -hmm. the, the 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 paper paper home. For your kids, because every every kid is uh, staying at home at the time, so previously right now is is gonna be some part of your your your, your little kids also stay at home, okay? Because of uh, still yeah, because the kindergarten is still not opening yet or what? So this is a good things that people are like, keen to go and take it. So what you gain actually from here is not is not lose revenue, but the thing is you gain awareness. From here you can see that a lot of sharing, a lot of uh, comments that you can get from uh, Facebook. So one thing that I would like to say is remember. Facebook is a social platform. So it's not, it's not, you, you, you can't treat Facebook as a selling platform because if you treat Facebook as a selling platform, so basically your posting will be not benefits to your users. So may think about it, try to make social engagement to your users, to your fans through Facebook. That is the main nature of Facebook. So Facebook will see if your post actually quite engaged and a lot of people are kind of comment and share, so that post is gonna be boomed out to everyone in the public. So if you're actually aware, when you're posting something that people are not keen to comment or like, so that post will be going down. Means that post will not go and viral and reach everyone. The rich people will be going down and stop there. So when when that, that post is like, keep on comment, keep on sharing, and Facebook, they know that, oh, this post is actually quite engaged. People are engaging with this post. This post is kind of interesting. So they will boom out and share to everyone that trying to reach with everyone that I mean I mean fit with this requirement. Okay, so remember this: Facebook is a social media engagement tool. All right. So basically, from here you can do some interesting parts like giving a, a like uh, asking questions about uh, what kind of a uh, furniture that's suitable from this angle and that angle. You can vote it so that asking for vote 
So basically, you are asking for engagement as well. And also, IKEA done a very good job about the appreciations. So the appreciation post about uh, raise the food, who raised the food on the table to make your home a space you're living in is our mom, is our parents that are actually keen to like uh, still because even we are away from home, but all the while your mom is actually working from home to prepare the food and everyone to your I mean to kids. So basically, we use that as an appreciation. So what you gain is the appreciation, likes, and also the comments and share as well. So as and and also for social media, you actually need to be like uh, immediate and uh, attached to what is happening right now. So what you can see here is Domino. From the right, you can see that when PS5 is launching, so basically Domino is having a very creative idea all the time. So you will like fit to what actually people are paying attention with, and then they fit their products with what is the latest trending. Okay, and this will get more attention, and people were aware on your brand. Oh, Domino will do something like ah uh, crazy again, creative again. So I remember Domino. Everyone is on the mouth with a loan Domino, Domino Pizza. So not means that you are Domino, but you always post Pizza Hut. You will always post this pizza, that pizza we get, this private flavor, that flavor. No, that, there's nothing nothing to do with that, but they, they play around with it with creative idea of the posting. All right. So when so just now I mentioned that how you're gonna post, right? So when you post this, but you didn't get any revenue. But the thing is, Facebook is very good that you have the tools that actually can gather to gather all the likes, all the comments, people in a group. So you can set it as a target group that you can use to run your ads to target them to buy some things. So from here, because you are getting the targeted group audience that actually you are looking for. For example, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are posting about the furniture. So a lot of people that came to comment and so on. So, so mainly you can see that there are people that are interested in furniture that only will comment and share and like. So you can get them up and then run another post that to target them with a right, I mean, your products that, that kind of relevant to them. So that will be much more efficient that you direct straight away to post your products. So basically that, that is the short tips that I'm going to share. So, and the last thing is Facebook also even having the e-commerce that you can actually tag your product with your e-commerce store. So here, basically when you're setting up your store, it's not just like you, you, you run Facebook ads, you run Google ads, then also you drive traffic to your e-commerce store. It's not just that, but basically you can also play around with your post and then just tag it tag your product with your e-commerce store catalog and people when interested on this, then when they click on that product, it will link to your e-commerce store and then they will buy from there. Okay, this is another another, another kind of trending that Facebook implemented and we can actually use it, utilize this, but not everyone actually knowing this. Okay, so the last thing I would like to say is create a reason, then call to action. Okay, yep. Okay, thank you, thank you, Wixon. Oh, so it's uh, so interesting that just now, uh, Mr. Song actually sharing with us about how how to uh, do the business online. Uh, Wixon actually also sharing about how, but how actually uh, bring the image of a company to the consumer itself with uh, lots of uh, details of uh, information and uh, example. And uh, especially quite impressive is uh, one of it is the Domino Pizza. It actually make it, dress it up like the flash speed, which is uh, one of the topic in the market. Everyone talk about it. Actually, yeah. it's a uh, topic into the trends so 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 i i believe that this is also uh vixen uh, also brings up one of uh, uh idea is uh let us uh, put ourselves into the shoe of a consumer what they want to see rather than what we want them to know actually the if the uh, customer the consumer gets the attention to whatever you bring up then they'll definitely be uh, following you or maybe purchase with you or maybe have a longer term of uh, of the uh, longer term of a relationship. Thank you, uh, Vixen, for the sharing. So uh, yeah. let us have uh, some of uh, also some discussion before we open some of the question to the floor. Um, from uh, for the MDEC. So uh, there is uh, one question that I would like to share, uh, ask uh, about about this. And uh, as uh, right now, a lot there's uh, a lot of uh, incentive for the market, the uh, SME business owner to take it to apply for it. But uh, one of the thing that may, might be one of the uh, one of the barrier for them is uh, some of them they really don't know how to start with it. If let's say they get the incentive already, where can they actually get the assistance or the help? 
whether the MDAC have uh, some uh, channel or the windows for them to approach so that they can actually learn and uh, learn how to kickstart this business through the digital marketing. Mr. Song? Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you for the questions. Very good questions. Uh, yes, uh, telling people how to go e-commerce, no need to tell already. People know how want to go to e-commerce. Now it's about how to get started. Just how I saw there's one question. How do we choose the right e-commerce channel? First thing, how to choose? Choose means in this case, there's so many out there. Should I go to this particular platform and not the other? So one thing is to study your competitors, what your competitor is doing. And then after that, you must improve from there. Don't just study and then just follow on it, but you don't improve from there. So that's one way of doing it. So let's say if your competitors who are selling, you, you are selling uh, what you call pen, and then your competitor is selling pen also online. So uh, which platform they goes to, and then you, you can study and how many, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, pen seller in that particular, so that, uh, that, that particular platform, so you roughly know. And then you try. Nowadays, most of the marketplaces are free for you to participate, so you try. So you know how to sell on Shopee, pretty much. You also know how to sell on Lazada, that kind of thing. So you try, you want to try until you find where is suitable. For example, if you are a restaurant owner, and you want to go on sell online, either you go for Grab or Food Panda example, right? So probably Food Panda is very strong in one area and uh, Grab is another. So you cannot say that it's always one is better than the other. So you have to try it out, right? So then we talk about how. Uh, good question just now. Just now I show you the Panjana uh, program. The Panjana program has one very interesting and it's different from whatever the government has offered before. The, that is, we, we are doing it co-funded, meaning is that uh, we put in $1, the industry put in $1, that we are co-fund the whole initiative. Not only that, for example, uh, if you want to go on Grab, and then you want to sell, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, on Grab, if you are a restaurant, you want to sell on Grab, or you are a hawker center, you want to sell on Grab. So what will happen is Grab has a series of support. So not only we just say, oh, okay, here is a voucher, go ahead and, and do it yourself. But no, in this case, there is sales support. There is also uh, other services like how to do your, you know, basically there are three main things, right? How to sell, how to collect money, how to deliver. So all these things will be taught. Not taught, I would say it will be, will be shown to you and hold, hold your hands for each of these platforms. All these platforms will have some, uh, what you call a uh, program for you. So if you want to go to Lazada or Shopee, they also have a support system to ensure that you know you participate and know how to do each step until you get online itself. And not only that, we will have coupon and voucher for you. For example, uh, delivery service, there will be some of them, some of them not all, will offer free delivery service for you. Meaning is that when you sell, and during this time, there will be some deliveries uh, uh, voucher for you, and then you can use this voucher to engage a delivery service, and that will save you some money. We understand during this COVID time, every dollar uh, is meaning uh, what they call important for you. That go back to your goes back to your your profit margin. So now it's a good time because it's cheap for you who are new into e-commerce. You start selling. When you start selling you may have cash flow issue because you sell and then you collect. So, and then your margin, when you want to compete, we have people, uh, can be very challenging. So right now, there is some incentives, there's some training, some incentive for you, so that not only you become skillful, but also to maximize your margin. So to answer to your questions, this Panjana program, not only just say, hey, come on board and sell online, but it actually have training, it has sales support, it has sales incentive to help you as well. So the, the go online, go to the web, uh, the link that I shared with you just now, and then you'll find out more. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Song. And uh, Wixon, I uh, also one question for you. From your experience, how do you think that the SMEs can avoid those uh, issues that uh, may directly affect the business, the company's operation? For example, some of the uh, company, they face some uh, insufficient bandwidth due to some infrastructure in that area. And uh, some have uh, security, which nowadays uh, some of the traditional business owners, 
they actually feel concerned about uh, doing the business online. So the second thing is the uh, security wise and also the maybe technological that uh, we always heard that some of the system hacked by, by someone and then all the company's data actually gone. So uh, in today's world, especially today, is this uh, still happening quite often? And uh, whether uh, there's uh, any uh, solution or any advanced uh, technology that actually helping the clients and the business owner. Yep. Uh, yep. Great questions. Uh, so to the public, right? So to, to who listening here. So what we advise is uh, most of our customers. What I would say is um, it keep happenings on in terms of the securities. It's not saying that uh, we are. I mean, every single party is not strong, but it's it's big. Is actually it's the behaviors. So what I would say is the behaviors of the owners or the the web designers that helping to build that web design, the design, the e-commerce store. So basically, the behavior is you have to maintain updates. So always, what kind of a tools, no matter what kind of tools that you are using, no matter what kind of a content management and CMS that you are using, ensure that you have the latest release. You must update it. Not saying that you build it up and then you just let it go and let it stay on the old versions until the end. So if you are letting that, so probably you will you you, you will get targeted by the hackers. So because that that is some opportunity that left out because that that is the reason why they updated the latest versions. So what I can see here is not most of the users is like they miss out. They are not caring. I mean they are not paying attention on here. So they just want to drive business to keep on having the existing website to running on. They keep on uh, updating the front end, but they actually miss out the back end. So what they will say is. Backend is also important. Make sure that you update the versions and also the password. So every time we keep on reminding, password have to be including how many characters, how many numbers, big capital and small capitals. Not just like ABC, not just like one, two, three, it's like that. No, no, basically a lot of SMEs are not aware on that until the impacts has been happening in their company. Then only they're aware, oh, I, 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 sorry, I, I previously, I, because I, I easy remember, so I use a simple password. So basically that, that one is very simple and simple things that people like keen to forget because they, 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 they want it to be easier. So basically if you are the one that are uh, maintaining your online business, you will have a part, I mean, a key, a key, like, uh, for Matt, you are having a kitchen to store your passwords for every single thing, including your, your, your bank kitchen or including your web. I mean, lock-in kitchens. So that one, you have to be use that to remember it. Then when it's for your convenience way, you just use it and apply. But not using your brain to remember the password because you hardly do remember a lot of, that would be a lot of password that you, 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 you need to remember. You, because e-commerce platform is not just one kind of, one, one single password that you can do everything. There's a lot of things that you need to connect with, like API, API and so on. Okay, then you, 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 you need a lot of like access. To connect it, then you have to make it secure. So from here, right, if you're having sufficient on this kind of a method, so basically you need to choose the right hosting company or you need to choose a right web design company that to help you with. So basically, when you're choosing the people that to help you to build your web design or e-commerce store, basically you have to be aware that um not to say uh, you have to based on their ratings, you have to based on word of mouth, how is the services, how reliable they are, and how good they are. They, I mean, it, it, not not just comparing the price. To be honest, don't don't just comparing price because of you want to build a website. Oh, they offer me just few hundred. You offer me few thousands. So there is a must a reason why they charge so high. So you have to be aware on that and make a decision based on the branding and reviews and the customers. So you need to judge on that because you are putting your revenue tools to them. You are not just simply playing a mama too with, with your websites. It's not just you. You are not just Setting up your website is just like that only. You have to make, I mean, trust with a reliable company to help you to maintain that. So basically, this will be have to be aware and have to be take notes on that. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Wixon. As uh, recently, I actually talked to quite a number of uh, business owners uh, out there, especially those uh, traditional uh, businessmen. I, I, I agree with you because their mindset is still stay on the, uh, what we call the, they call the website as an e-commerce. So they still use the website mindset to actually attract the people and hopefully people will go to visit their website and do whatever things to uh, promote in the website. But actually at the back end part, there's a lot more than that that they actually need to do yeah. only to maintain the business uh, physically, but actually the back end, they still need to maintain it. So uh, thanks. Uh, 
Uh, of course, the question is uh, open to both of you as speakers. So if let's say Mr. Song has uh, something to input, you can actually do so. And Mr. Song also can answer the questions as yep, sure. answer by Song. So anything you want to input from Song? If not, we will open the questions uh, questions from the floor to answer. I, I think we open to the floor because I think is uh, we don't have much time. So let's, let's answer as much as possible. Okay. Uh, is there any question from uh, Facebook? Yeah, I saw some question there. So uh, it says that, in your opinion, uh, is applying e-commerce is today business must? So, mm. uh, so, so uh, this is a question. I I think most people will say yes, but I think it very much depends. But one thing for sure is that uh, at least you must be discoverable on internet. Uh, example: If you are operating a uh, gourmet restaurants and you are so good in your food well with your food you maybe no need to have e-commerce website that means you don't need to uh, you know to have transaction online e-commerce when we talk about e-commerce is there's shopping cart with more you may not need to have that but at least you need to be discoverable meaning is that people can find you because nowadays first thing we want to want to we, we want to uh what to call that uh, buy or want to use first thing is we look at our phone and search and then first, that, so you must be you must be found online. Second thing is they must be reviewed to talk how good are you. Then they attract them to come to your shop. Probably in that case, you uh, you don't need e-commerce per se because you don't need transaction online. But mm -hmm. you definitely need to be discovered online, probably Facebook yep. or whatever that is, uh, or, or your own website. So that yeah, though, though in those situations, probably not so much an e-commerce per se, but at least discovered online. Yeah, so, so so I think yeah that is yeah to support further uh, Mr. Song question I mean the answers right so you can actually apply Google by Mrs. So Google by Mrs. is one of the locations strategies that you can plot you can plot your location current your restaurant locations into Google that you can be you can get found. So basically one of and another thing is create your Facebook fan page. So when you're creating your Facebook fan page, you can actually put in your address, then probably in Facebook people are able to tag you. So and another third option is you build your websites. It's not e-commerce, but build your websites. So your website is a, a branding website. You have to build your own branding instead, instead of e-commerce. So you 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 have to already show your manuals on your website. So probably there will be much more. I mean, helpful in terms of people are looking for your restaurant. They will see, oh, this is like quite quite well maintained, and uh, they they are having a very good branding in terms of the website presentations and so on. They are more com com. I mean, being convinced that to to try your food through. I mean, it, instead of just uh the pictures, but they have a very very well. I mean, branding awareness to be built with. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. And uh, Hava and uh, Bernice, any question from the floor? Any other questions? Okay, let me see. In your, in your opinion, what do you think in the future if SME develop more capability to the young generation and improve their performance to maximize value? So the question is uh, more on the how to uh, develop more young generations to involve in uh, this uh, e-commerce to maximize the value. So I think my and that also have uh, some kind of uh, this kind of. Uh, uh, efforts yeah. to the new younger generation, right? Yes, uh, and that we have a e Usawan programs that uh, help to develop the, the younger generations, especially those we call it e Usawan Muda, where we trained uh, young, uh, uh, what you call university with university students or about to graduate to get into e commerce. Uh, uh, so we have those training, but I want to address the questions differently. Uh, because he said that is SME developed that more capability. I think very critical the business owner out there, especially those who are already in business for some years, they must recognize that the e-commerce, uh, pretty much the young people has an advantage because of their being exposed to e-commerce. So you have to somehow give support to the young people to do, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to give way to them. I mean, Yes, you can give them business, uh, what you call, uh, uh, knowledge to them, but pretty much how to operate the online, uh, give them freedom to do something. Because otherwise, you, if you always use your own ideas and say that ah, this one cannot be done, that one cannot be done, 
you are you are you know you are not giving the chance to your people. I think very important you must give chance because what cannot be done before doesn't mean now cannot be done. Because last time, for example, if I come and tell you, uh, Roy, and say, "Hey, Roy, if I give fifty ringgit to you, can you allow a stranger to come and stay in your house?" To the old people will say that, "Hey, no, fifty ringgit, no." But look at A, B, and B. Pretty much, this is what is happening, right? So. Why nowadays can? Because now Facebook allow them to look through who is the guy who will come and, and uh, what do you call that, stay in my house. Pretty much I can scan through the guy before I allow him to come to my house first, right? So they, that kind of, uh, what you call that, support system was not there to allow that to happen maybe 20 years ago. But now technology and ecosystem players, service provider allow that to happen. So. Don't use the old mindset to judge what can or cannot be done. You have to let the young people, in this case, to really bring value, new value, uh, you know, to the to, to your business. If you're not, somebody else will disrupt your business if it's not your own young employee. That's how I see it, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Song. So we have another two minutes to go. So I'm um, sorry, that Mr. Wixon. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Wixon, I can't see you now. But anyhow, thank you very much for two uh, speakers for today who share with us uh, your information and experience on this uh, topic. So thank you very much for the audience on the uh, website and uh, Facebook. Please to uh, subscribe to the uh, channel and uh, also visit our event for today. And uh, we have an uh, upcoming webinar uh, soon, which is started at uh, 3 o'clock this day on the uh, page. Thank you very much. See you. Bye.